So your child needs a bladder augmentation, catheterizable channel, and a mace. This is Betty Ann Thibodeau, Pediatric Urology Nurse Practitioner at the Stollery Children's Hospital. Your child's surgery will be done under general anesthetic and your child will be in hospital for 7 to 10 days. Your child will have three procedures done at once. Before discharge from hospital, you and your child will be shown how to care for the catheters, the bladder, and the mace at home. To learn more about what to expect on the day of your child's surgery, go to the Stollery website and search Your Child's Surgery. Immediately after surgery, your child will receive pain medication through their IV and by mouth. Your child may have pain in their belly and along the incision. Over time, the pain will become less and your child will be switched to oral pain medications before going home. Once at home, the mild pain may continue for a while. Over-the-counter pain medications will help to relieve the pain. Speak to your pharmacist if you have any questions about your child's pain medications. The bowels normally contract and relax in waves to move food through the bowels. After surgery, the bowels usually stop working for a period of time and it can take a few days for the bowels to wake up and start moving again. Some medications may slow the bowels down as well. Your child may not have much appetite, may be unable to pass gas, have some nausea and vomiting, and the belly may get distended or bloated. If your child has a lot of vomiting, your child may need a tube inserted through the nose into the stomach to drain the stomach until the bowels start working again. Usually when the bowels begin to work again, your child will have a lot of crampy pain. Getting up and walking around will help the bowels move and relieve the discomfort. A bladder augmentation is a surgical procedure in which a portion of the small bowel is used to make the bladder bigger. The top of the bladder is open and a piece of small bowel is sewn on top of the bladder as a patch to make the bladder bigger. A catheterizable channel is a tunnel from the abdominal wall into the bladder. This tunnel allows your child to insert a catheter into the bladder through an opening in their abdominal wall. The Mitrofenov procedure uses the appendix to make this channel and the Monty procedure uses a piece of small bowel to make the tunnel. Your doctor will decide which channel is best for your child. The MACE or Malone Anti-Grade Continence Enema is a surgical procedure which uses the appendix to make a channel into the bowel. This channel allows to flush a large volume of fluid to clean out the large bowel. It is a different way of giving an enema and reduces or prevents bowel accidents. Your child will have a large incision or cut in the belly below the belly button. Immediately after surgery, the incision will be covered by steri strips and a bandage. The bandage is usually removed before your child is discharged from hospital. After surgery, there will be three or four tubes coming out of the belly. Your child will have two tubes which drain the bladder, the Monty and Mitrofenov catheter in the catheterizable channel and the suprapubic tube. The tube in the catheterizable channel helps keep the channel open while it heals. The suprapubic tube comes out of a the bladder through a small incision in the lower belly. Your child will have a tube coming out of the bowel which helps keep the mace channel open while it heals. Your child will also have a tube with a bulb on the end coming out of the surgical area in the lower portion of the belly. This tube will drain any extra blood or fluid which accumulates in the belly around the surgical area after surgery. This picture shows the different tubes that will be coming out of your child's belly. The mace tube often comes out of the belly button and is clamped after surgery. There will be a tube in the catheterizable channel and a suprapubic tube in the lower abdomen. Both these tubes will be draining urine from the bladder. The last tube, the JP drain or the tube with the bulb in it, will be draining blood and fluid from the abdomen. The bowel normally produces mucus which will continue after surgery. It is important to remove the mucus because it can cause urinary tract infections and bladder stones. To remove the mucus, the bladder needs to be irrigated. Initially after surgery, the bladder needs to be irrigated every day, but as the mucus production decreases over time, you will not need to irrigate the bladder as often. If the mucus production increases again, you will need to increase the frequency of your irrigations. Before your child is discharged from hospital, you and your child will be shown how to care for and irrigate the bladder at home. The catheter in the Monty or Mitrofenov channel is a small flexible tube which is passed through the tunnel into the bladder. This catheter keeps the tunnel open while both the channel and the bladder heal. This tube helps to drain the bladder and will be attached to a urinary drainage bag. This tube is inserted during surgery and will be stitched in place as well as taped to the abdomen with a securement device or medical grade tape. 
This tube is usually removed three weeks after surgery. After the catheter is removed, you will be shown how to insert a catheter into the channel to drain the bladder. A suprapubic catheter is a small flexible plastic tube which helps the urine drain from the bladder into a urinary drainage bag. This tube is put in the bladder during surgery through a small cut in the lower abdomen. The tube is held in place by a couple of stitches as well as taped to the abdomen. This tube will stay in place until you and your child are comfortable with catheterizing the bladder through the catheterizable channel. As both the tube and the catheterizable channel and the suprapubic tube drain the bladder and are connected to urinary drainage bags, you may notice that one tube drains more than the other depending on how your child is positioned. Daily care of these tubes will help prevent urinary tract infections as well as prevent the tubes from getting plugged or accidentally pulled out. The temporary mace catheter keeps the tract open while the mace heals. This tube is stitched in place as well as secured with a securement device or medical grade tape so the tube does not get accidentally pulled out. The tube will stay in place for at least three weeks. This tube will be used for the mace flushes while the tract heals once your child is tolerating a diet. This tube will remain plugged all the time except when you're doing the mace flushes. A Jackson Pratt drain or JP drain is a special tube with a bulb on the end which drains any extra blood or fluid inside the belly from the surgery site. The bulb is squeezed to provide a mild suction which pulls the fluid into the bulb. The bulb is usually emptied a couple times a day. This tube is inserted during surgery and is usually removed before your child goes home. The suprapubic catheter and the catheter in the catheterizable channel will be connected to large urinary drainage bags or bedside bags. These large urinary drainage bags can hold up to 2,500 mils of urine. These bags can be hung on the side of the bed or on a chair. These large bags should be used at night, anytime your child will be staying home, or when your child is sitting or lying down for long periods of time. A leg bag or a small urinary drainage bag can be used for trips outside the house or during the day when your child is up and moving around. These bags are smaller and only hold about 570 mils. As a result, these drainage bags must be emptied more often. A leg bag can be strapped to the leg and hidden under your child's clothes. To prevent infections, it's important to always wash your hands with soap and water before and after any catheter care, before and after any skin care, before and after irrigating catheters, as well as before and after you change or empty the urinary drainage bags. Your child can shower or bath. You can hang the catheter bags outside the shower to keep them dry while your child showers. You can wash around the incision with soap and water and then pat the area dry. Do not use any lotions or powders on the skin or around the incision. Check the incision daily for any signs of infection. It is normal to have a small amount of redness around the suprapubic catheter, the tube in the catheterizable channel, and the mace catheters from the tubes rubbing against the skin. The incision and areas around the catheters can be left open to the air. Gently clean the area around the catheters with soap and water every day. Gently remove any crusted areas around the tubes. Clean approximately 10 centimeters down the catheter, moving away from the skin or the insertion site of the catheter. Rinse the area around the catheter and the catheter with warm, clean water, and then pat the area dry. Do not apply powders or lotions to the area. Apply antibiotic ointment around the tubes daily with a cotton swab. If there is urine leaking around the urinary catheters, you can cover the catheter insertion sites with a gauze bandage. You can cut a slit or a Y in the gauze so that the gauze fits around the catheter better, then secure the gauze with medical grade tape. Change the bandage every day or when wet. It is important to keep the bladder empty for at least three weeks after surgery to allow the bladder to heal. Ensure that the catheters are draining all the time to prevent the bladder from getting overstretched and rupturing. The bowel that is placed on as a patch on top of the bladder makes a lot of mucus which can build up in the bladder. The mucus in the bladder can cause stones or urinary tract infections. It is important to flush or irrigate the mucus from the bladder by flushing fluid in and out of the bladder. Irrigating the bladder regularly will also prevent the mucus from plugging the catheters. If your child has sudden pain or the urine stops draining, make sure the catheters are not plugged by irrigating them. Before your child goes home from the hospital, you will be taught how to irrigate the bladder. Do not unhook the catheters from the urinary drainage bags unless you're changing the bags or irrigating the bladder. Always make sure the catheters are draining all the time and that the tubes are, do not get twisted, kinked, 
or plugged with mucus. Irrigate the catheters if the catheters are not draining. Do not tug or pull on the catheters and always empty the drainage bags when they're half full. The drainage bags should be positioned lower than the bladder so that they drain properly. Keep the drainage bags clean. Keep the suprapubic catheter and the catheter in the catheterizable channel taped to the belly with a catheter securement device or medical grade tape to prevent the catheters from getting accidentally pulled out. Before starting the bladder irrigations, empty the urinary drainage bags, wash your hands and gather your supplies. You will need warm water. If using well water, boil the water first and allow it to cool. You may also use bottled or distilled water. You will also need antiseptic swabs to clean the catheter connections, a container to collect the fluid you withdraw from the bladder, a 60 ml catheter tip syringe, and a clean towel or washcloth to place under the catheter connections to collect any drips or leakage when you disconnect the catheter from the drainage bag. Your child may sit, lie in bed, or stand when you irrigate the bladder. You may find that one of these positions seems to work better than the other positions when irrigating your child's bladder. To irrigate the bladder, fill a 60 ml syringe with warm water. When you initially start the irrigations, you will begin with 30 ml, but as the bladder capacity increases, you will increase the volume to 60 ml. Place a clean towel or washcloth under the connection site between the catheter and urinary drainage bag to collect any leaks or spills. Clean the connection site between the catheter and urinary drainage bag with an antiseptic swab. Carefully disconnect the catheter from the drainage bag. Insert the water-filled syringe into the end of the catheter. Gently clamp the opposite catheter tubing while you are irrigating the catheter or the fluid will run out the opposite catheter. Gently push the water through the catheter into the bladder. Without removing the syringe, gently pull back on the syringe to remove the fluid from the bladder. You should drain the fluid you instilled in the bladder, as well as any urine or mucus which was in the bladder. Continue withdrawing the fluid until you cannot pull back any more fluid. If you do not get all the fluid back, you instilled do not force it, as the catheter may be up against the wall of the bladder. Disconnect the syringe from the catheter and discard the fluid you removed from the bladder. Do not put this fluid back in the bladder. Repeat the irrigations until the fluid you drain from the bladder comes back clear and there is no more mucus being pulled into the syringe. Reconnect the catheter to the drainage bag when you're finished. Repeat the process with the other catheter. Always keep the drainage bag below the level of your child's bladder. As the catheter is drained by gravity, this allows the catheter to drain and prevents the urine from flowing back into the bladder. Check often to ensure the catheter is draining and the urine is flowing into the drainage bag. Always empty the drainage bag when it's half full, as it will prevent the drainage bag from overflowing and the urine from backing up. To empty the large urinary drainage bag, remove the drain spout from the sleeve at the bottom of the bag. Open the clamp on the drain spout and drain the urine from the bag into the toilet or a container. After draining the bag, close the clamp and reinsert the drain spout into the sleeve at the bottom of the collection bag. Always wash your hands before and after emptying the drainage bags. When changing the urinary drainage bag, wash your hands and gather your supplies. You will need a new urinary drainage bag, whether it's a large bag or a leg bag, clean towels or washcloths to place under the connection site to collect any leaks or drips, as well as under the new urinary drainage bag, as well as antiseptic swabs. Empty the drainage bag and wash your hands again. Place a towel or washcloth under the connection site from the catheter, as well as under the new drainage bag. Clean the connection site between the catheter and the old drainage bag with an antiseptic swab. Remove the old drainage bag. Before attaching the new bag to the catheter, remove the cap from the tubing and clean the tip of the tubing. Attach the new urinary drainage bag to the catheter and place a cap back on the tubing of the old drainage bag. Always keep the caps in a safe place when not being used. Check the urinary drainage bags every day for any damage. You should change the drainage bag every seven days or sooner if the drainage bag is leaking, damaged, or discolored. Discard the old or damaged drainage bag. Some important points to remember about the catheters. Always wash your hands with soap and water before and after you do anything with catheters or drainage bags, as well as if, when you perform any skin care. Always clean all connections with antiseptic wipes before disconnecting or reconnecting the urinary drainage bags. Make sure there are no kinks or twists in the tubing that would stop the flow of urine from the bladder. Irrigate the catheters if the catheters are not draining. If your child is very active, tape the connections between the catheter and drainage bag to prevent the tubing from coming apart. 
Once your child is eating and tolerating a regular diet, you'll begin to flush the mace. It's important to flush the mace every day to keep the bowel empty. The flushes are usually started through the temporary mace catheter while your child is in hospital and before your child goes home. You will follow the schedule listed on the following page. To begin the flushes, you will need to gather your supplies. You will need a 60 ml catheter tip syringe or a feeding bag, as well as the appropriate amount of warm, not hot, tap water. Before you begin the flushes, your child should be sitting on the toilet. For the first few flushes, you will use a 60 ml syringe, and when you're flushing a larger volume, you will switch to the kangaroo feeding bag. You will likely not see much for results until you're flushing with a larger volume. This is the flushing schedule you will follow. As you can see, you will increase the flush volume by 50 mils every three days. This is the kangaroo feeding bag. Before you begin, ensure the roller clamp is closed or the water will run out onto the floor. To use the feeding bag, you will lift the lid and pour the appropriate amount of warm water through the top into the bag. Squeeze the drip chamber so that you get some fluid into the chamber. If you do not fill the drip chamber with water, you will get a lot of air in the tubing while you're doing the flushes. Open the roller clamp part way to slowly fill the tubing with water. Close the roller clamp once the water reaches the end of the tubing. Hang the kangaroo feeding bag high above your child on a hook behind the toilet or on an S hook over the shower curtain rod as the water flows by gravity. Remove the plug from the temporary mace catheter. Attach the tubing from the kangaroo feeding bag to the temporary mace catheter. Slowly open the roller clamp halfway to allow the water to flow into your child's belly. As your child becomes more comfortable with the flushes, you may be able to open the roller clamp more to speed up the flow of the water. Some individuals can tolerate the roller clamp being wide open. If your child becomes crampy with the flushes, slow down the flow rate by adjusting the roller clamp. The whole process should take between 45 to 60 minutes. If there's no water flowing, try hanging the bag higher. When finished with your equipment, Wash it with dish soap and water and allow the feeding bag to air dry. You can continue to use the same feeding bag until the bag starts to leak or no longer works. The volume of warm water required to flush the bowels is different for everyone. Use the flushing schedule to slowly increase the volume of water and find the right amount of water for your child. Your child may need more or less volume than what is recorded on the schedule. You will know you have the correct volume when the flushes are completed in 45 to 60 minutes and your child does not have any accidents or staining in the underwear for 24 hours. If your child complains of cramping with the flushes, adjust the flow rate by slowing down the flushes or decrease the volume you are flushing. It may take some time to find the correct volume and flow rate that works for your child. Some tips to keep your child comfortable during their flushes include using a step stool or squatty potty under their feet so their feet aren't dangling, which may also help your child empty their bowels, using a towel or blanket on their lap for warmth and a small pillow behind their back for comfort, setting up a small table so your child can do their homework, or setting up an iPad or tablet so your child can watch movies, shows, or play games during their flushes. Sometimes your child may have some mild discomfort from the incision or the tube sites. Use over-the-counter pain medication as directed. If you have questions about the pain medicines, call your pharmacist. If the pain medication is not working and the pain is getting worse, call your doctor. Your child may have some minor skin irritation or redness around the tubes. This is normal. If the redness around the tube is getting worse, hot to touch, or spreading out from the tube, call your doctor. It's not uncommon to have some small urine leakage around the bladder catheters. Sometimes your child can also develop some red, beefy-looking tissue around the catheters. This is normal and can be treated in clinic if it becomes bothersome. These are pictures of minor skin irritation that can occur around the tubes the normal redness around the tube, as well as granulation tissue. Granulation tissue is that red beefy tissue that bulges out around the tubes. The granulation tissue can be dealt with in the clinic if it becomes bothersome. Call if your child has any signs of a urinary tract infection or infection around the incision or catheter sites. Signs of a wound infection or catheter site might be irritated, swollen or red, tender skin pus from the incision or catheter site, the incision is opening up, increased pain around the site, a fever, or a general feeling of unwellness. Signs of a urinary tract infection may include foul-smelling cloudy urine, 
increased mucus production, blood in the urine, fever, nausea and or vomiting, general feeling of unwellness, or flank pain felt below the rib cage and above the waist on one side or both sides of the back. Call your doctor or Betty Ann or take your child into emergency. If the catheters are not draining even after you irrigated them, one or more of the catheters has fallen out. There are signs of a urinary tract infection, wound infection, or infection around the catheter sites, or you're having difficulty managing your child's care at home. If you have questions, you can call your doctor or you can contact Betty Ann, the Stollery Pediatric Urology Nurse Practitioner, at 780-407-7010 Monday to Friday during the day. You will need some supplies to care for your child at home after surgery. You can either purchase the supplies from a healthcare store, pharmacy, or online. You may need to go to more than one store to purchase the supplies. For your convenience, you may purchase a care at home kit from the hospital. This kit will contain the supplies you require for your child for the first few weeks at home. This package must be purchased before your child is discharged from hospital. Please let your nurse know if you require a care at home kit. This is a list of supplies that your child will need at home after surgery. The catheter in the catheterizable channel and the MACE catheter are usually removed approximately three weeks after surgery. You will need to book a clinic appointment for the catheter removals. If you do not have an appointment booked when your child is discharged from hospital, call 780-407-1980 to book a follow-up appointment for approximately three weeks after your child's surgery. The catheters in the MACE and the catheterizable channel will be removed in clinic approximately three weeks after surgery. During the appointment, your doctor will remove the tubes and you will be shown how to insert a catheter into the catheterizable channel to drain the bladder and how to insert a catheter into the MACE to give the MACE flushes. Once the catheters are removed, your child will be left with small openings in the belly where the catheters were. The suprapubic catheter will remain in place until you and your child are comfortable with catheter rising through the channel. You will need another appointment to have the suprapubic catheter removed. If the opening for the catheterizable channel or the mace become tight, you can insert a catheter into the opening of the catheterizable channel or the mace and leave the catheter in place for seven days to stretch the opening. Secure the catheter in place with medical grade tape or a catheter securement device. To prevent leakage from the catheter, you can either put a plug in the end of the catheter or tie a knot in the catheter close to the open end before inserting the catheter into the channel. If you use a knotted catheter, you will need to remove the catheter and insert another catheter into the channel to empty the bladder or do the mace flushes. Once you're finished draining the bladder or doing the mace flush, you can remove the catheter and, from the channel and reinsert the knotted catheter and tape it back in place. This video is made to help you care for your child at home and made possible with funding from the Stollery Children's Hospital Foundation.